Hello, I'm Thomas Hare, Chief Content Officer of the Performance Driven Marketing Institute, a not-for-profit trade association that serves companies in the performance and direct-to-consumer marketing world. Welcome to the latest episode of Take 20, created by the PDMI's Brand Response Council. These 20-minute live conversations featuring leaders in the performance marketing world speaking about the hottest topics in the industry are scheduled twice monthly. Check out the pdmi.com slash take-20 for the upcoming schedule. Before we get to today's conversation, a quick housekeeping note. The group will be addressing any questions from the audience at the end of today's session. We don't have to wait to ask them. Utilize the questions tab on your control panel to type and send in your question. We'll be collecting them and we'll try to get to as many as possible in the final moments of this episode. So let's get to it. Today's topic is the trajectory of the easy for me to say, the trajectory of e-commerce. I'd like to welcome our host, Chris Foster, Vice President of New Business at Modern Postcard, a national direct marketing company that services businesses of all sizes and all markets. Chris is the chair of the Brand Response Council. His guest today is Phil Gorman, the founder and CEO of e-commerce events. We just hosted a major virtual event, e-commerce day, last Thursday. Thank you all for joining us. Chris, take it away. Thanks so much. Appreciate it, Thomas, and welcome, Phil. I'm so glad you're here. Um, as we noted, uh, Phil's the CEO of e-commerce day. This was a fantastic virtual event happened last week, almost 2000 registered folks coming in from all walks of life in the e-commerce world. The e-commerce ecosystem is massive. Not only do you have the direct response brands, clearly um, small businesses, mid market companies, but you also have the ancillary services uh, service companies that support those folks. And this e-commerce day was sponsored by the likes of Google, and Shopify, Facebook, I think you might have heard of some of those brands, um, but they were major sponsors of the program because they know that e-commerce is starting to become one of the major movements in the retail space and is becoming a lifeblood of the American economy. So we're excited to talk about the findings from e-commerce day and Phil, I know that we, we've talked a lot about some of this stuff, but you know, it's one thing to have books written by progn prognosticators and think tanks and what's gonna happen, but it's quite another to hear a story about e-commerce's next landscape changes by the ones who are actually doing the selling online, the ones who are working every single day and the ones who support those businesses. Um, you know, we'd like to kind of break down what happened at e-commerce day, talk about the surprises, some of the insights and the key takeaways um, you know, you had someone like Rebecca Minkoff, who has built a fantastic e-commerce empire. Uh, she was the keynote speaker. Um, you had Dylan Whitman, who had created a Shopify agency, sold that. You had participants, like I said, from Shopify and Google and Facebook. It was completely packed. So there's a lot to talk about. <laughs> we only have about 15 or 20 minutes. <laughs> so, um, so I'm going to just have a couple of questions and then we can riff off. So my first question to you, Phil, is what was one new idea to come out of e-commerce day that really surprised you? You know, that's a great question, <clears throat> Chris. And, and just really quick, thanks for having me today and, yeah. and, and all the kind words. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, we had an interesting guest and somebody I found on a, um, you know, I, I'm just a big fan of e-commerce, so I'm patrolling all the various uh, chat rooms and conversations that are going on on the different um, channels, whether it's LinkedIn or even some of the obscure places. And I found a uh, company called Jika, and Keenan Davison is the founder of it. Can you spell and that for we, us? Uh, J-I-K-A. Okay. Um, and it's a Shopify plugin that allows for A-B price testing for products. Wow. So, um, yeah, so, you know, a few years ago, there was a lot of talk about dynamic pricing, right? We're all familiar with that, with airlines, right? If I don't jump on it today, the price is gonna be higher tomorrow. Amazon had talked about making their grocery stores, including Whole Foods, you know, having dynamic pricing based on the number of products that are left on the shelf, right? It's gonna get more <laughs> right. As the mm -hmm. shelf gets cleaned off, and th that never really took hold, surprisingly enough. And um, so this this is a little bit different. The A/B price testing. So if you have something that you think, right? We all think we have the best ideas, and we know what our customers want. But when it comes to pricing, you know, there's a lot of gray area. And and Keenan has has really uh, built a, a pretty mag magnificent tool that can help even incrementally uh, a, a small 
e-commerce store become more profitable. That is a wonderful find, Phil. And here's what I love about Jika. Um, a, it's a Shopify plugin, meaning that if I have a mm -hmm. Shopify site, it's a super easy installation. So I don't have to be a technical or you know web development guru to install it. Because if I'm a small business owner and I'm a small business e-commerce owner, I'm working 10, 12 hours a day, and it suddenly it's 10:30 at night, and I'm like, oh, I've got to do web development. Ugh. But they can make it easy. But secondly, this is so emblematic of the e-commerce space. You can't do A/B price testing on a shop floor inside a store. On the fly, fluid. You can cut, gather your data and take action. And frankly, Chris, that's why I'm focused on the e-commerce industry today. I've done a lot of things in my professional life and background and even had, you know, had done business shoot 30 years ago with your company and mm -hmm. um, in, a, in another life. Uh, but I, I am in e-commerce because of the daily changes and the ability, not only from a service provider view, but a, for a merchant, Man, how exciting. The business is different every day. And right. you know, this year is a bit of an anomaly, right, in terms of excitement. Um, not all e-commerce companies have benefited from from the events of, of the past six, eight months, but um, many have. Sure. And many are off the charts, and many we even see on the stock market have benefited uh, greatly. So it's that ever-changing atmosphere that keeps me getting up every day and, and wanting to see what's next. Well, so you know what's interesting about the e-commerce space is it's really blending two major trends, um, advances in technology and advances, actually more than two major trends, advances in technology, advances in marketing understanding, advances in data and consumer behavior understanding, right? Those things can blend actually, and even right now on this screen, we have an A-B split test. You and I can go to a, uh, a site with Jika installed. I'm going to get one price. You're going to get a different price. We have no idea that we're paying different prices, Chica knows. And Chica right. can follow not only our behavior, uh, whether or not we abandon the cart or buy, they can take, A, it's a new technology installation, but B, they, they can take the data to make more informed pricing decisions moving forward. So a small business or e-commerce company doesn't have to have an army of data analysts. Um, and it democratizes some of the interesting learnings that um, big brands have. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. It's that even playing field. You know, a lot of folks are daunted by this, this overwhelming idea of starting a new business, um, and they sometimes just can't get out of the gate because it is an overwhelming idea, like thinking that, oh, Best Buy is going to crush me, right, right. If, I, if I try and sell electronics. But the reality is you can deploy almost every tool that Best Buy deploys to, pick, to gain new customers, <laughs> right. to sell new product, to price test. There's just so, you know, fulfillment and other services, advertising, you can mimic the big guys. So you're right, the word democratization, you know, it, it's an even playing field and it's not limited by wallets. I mean, truly, yes, Shopify and some of the other platforms will tell you it's 29 bucks, you can be in business tomorrow. The reality is, you know, maybe it's 100 uh, $150, you can have a mock school. <laughs> oh, know, no, that's, oh, that's still not a lot. Yeah, <laughs> still not a lot. And you can deploy those tools like Ajika and some of the others. So lots of free tools and or even tools that are priced um, where you don't start paying until you hit a certain volume. Oh, wow. um, the nice thing about the, and one of the reasons why w w we actually produce the events that we do is that almost everybody in the industry is willing to help a uh, merchant do more, do better, sell more, be more profitable, add more products, find new audiences, uh, you know, talk to your customers, nurture your customers, create a living, all those things. Everybody, I, I, and I mean almost everybody I've ever encountered in the industry over the last several years has that mindset. They want so, to help. I, lo I love that idea, Phil, because we talk about an ecosystem and the e-commerce ecosystem, but as we all know from our Biology 101 classes in high school and in college, ecosystems are completely interdependent, right? You have to have the right flowers and grasses. You have the herbivores. You have the predators. Um, you know, the ecosystem of a bayou has everything from small tadpoles up to, you know, alligators. Um, and so it's it's a whole thing that feeds on itself, and you want 
a healthy ecosystem to help each other out. So, you know, with that in mind, with the ecosystem of e-commerce, with all the tools that you've talked about, some free, some small paid, you know, and all the learnings that they can get and all the free learnings that they can get, it can be probably overwhelming for a new brand to start out to pick and choose. So if I would ask, if you had three pieces of kind of tactics um, and or technology that you would say these are must have to get started as foundational pieces, what would they be? You know, really great, great question. I would start with, um, besides having just a, a, a good um, foundation of a website, that's why I'm, I'm partnered with Shopify. They, you uh -huh. know, there's some others out there, Wix and Squarespace, have a great tool um, to, and foundation. So you, you got to start with that. Um, and, and most of those are pretty bulletproof today, right? You can't, can't have a product like that if it's got some weaknesses or, or uh, you know, shuts down, breaks down. Right. Um, so starting with a, a great foundation of, a, you know, picking the right provider. Number two, I would say email capture. Um, you know, I conduct a lot of live webinars with folks that are looking to get into e-commerce or they've already started and they're trying to get to the next level. And every single time, without doubt, the power of email marketing and, mm -hmm. and the ability to capture emails is always underestimated by the audience, always. Okay. Okay. And they, they just don't understand the power of owning your customer's email address. Not that you're going to spam them like the old days. Nobody really does that so much anymore, right? Um, you know, e-commerce companies have learned how to be considerate, how to serve up emails and present products, ideas, solutions to the customer base that makes sense. And frankly, it's the best bang for the buck uh, based on well-known data that's been collected across all kinds of categories, mm -hmm. product categories, and nation, um, you know, locations that one of the, the highest uh, performing uh, advertising tool you have sure. is email marketing, so conversion rates. And so, then so I would I'll, say, I'll, I'll, I'll ask three. you real quick, if you, if yeah, I could yeah. just stop you before number three, you gave us Wix, Squarespace, and Shopify as e-commerce foundations. What are your top three go-tos for email providers? You know, uh, there are a lot of good ones. Uh, Omnisend uh, is one that's focused on e-commerce companies. So is Klaviyo. Uh, Klaviyo is an interesting spelling. It's K-L-A-V-I. IYO, I think it is. Okay. I'm sorry, I don't have it right in front of me. <laughs> That's fine. But those two are focused on helping um, e-commerce merchants. You know, those are Wonderful. tied into their stores, and they help them convert um, additional sales, whether that's uh, abandoned cart or uh, uh, post-sale follow-up or add-ons, things like that. So, so those two are good. You know, Mailchimp and uh, Shopify had a divorce last year. They had a falling out. Um, the functionality is still there. There's just a plugin that goes sits in between Mailchimp and Shopify today. It still works. I, I use it in a particular case. Mm -hmm. um, but those three are the old are, are the standbys, and they work, and they're good, and they're inexpensive. Excellent. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. So we have a great website foundation, email provider, and what's your number three must have? You know, uh, a lot of people think, oh, I need to be on Facebook, right? I need Facebook or Google advertising. Um, you know, for me, table stakes is retargeting. And okay. I'm not just saying this, you know, for, because I know that, you know, Chris, that, that's your, your mainstay right now, modern.io. <laughs> right. Modern.io is a retargeting solution, which, of course, I'm a fan of. But retargeting in general, whether it's digital or yeah. uh, print postcards, sure. is a must-have. So what I like to tell people in my workshops, you know, if you own a coffee shop or you're selling your items in a retail store on Main Street in your town and somebody walks into the store and walks out, right? We've all done it. You know, nothing's more frustrating <laughs> than the clerk in the store, right? Oh. They came and they left and then they're gone. Mm -hmm. Right. Retargeting enables you to, to at least, uh, you know, grab a piece of that person and continue talking to them even though they've gone on their way or down the street. Sure. And again, done they appropriately. express an interest. Yeah. And done appropriately, it, it can be well received. Um, SMS, it, it would be, I would say, if, right. if I could have a two part answer for number three. Yes. SMS messaging has Excellent. come about pretty, pretty strong in the last year. And, okay. and again, done properly, um, that can be integrated into a communication strategy and convert into additional incremental sales. Fantastic. I love it. That was a 
wonderful breakdown, great foundation of a website, strong email provider, and retargeting plus slash SMS as part of that. That's great. Right. Um, right. We, are, we are actually getting close to rounding it out uh, for the last question and then some questions from our audience. So Phil, I have a question. Hi, I'm an e-commerce company. I've got $25,000 in budget that I've squirreled away from my penny, you know, from my jar. What should I spend it on? Well, congratulations on the savings, number one. <laughs> Thank you. And, and be prepared to spend it. Um, but really, you know, it, it isn't necessarily about the amount of money. Um, I've already touched on the importance of gathering email. So really uh, creating relationships that enable you to grow the audience that you can own. So an email address and somebody's contact information, you as a business own that, right? Versus a, a, a relationship through Amazon. If you place your products on Amazon and get orders, you don't own that customer. That's Amazon's customer. Um, right. But if you have a direct relationship with a buyer and they give you their email address to talk to them, you own them and you can talk to them forever. And using those tools that we just talked about, it's really relatively inexpensive to stay in touch with them and keep the communication going. So contests, partnerships, uh, giveaways, uh, things like that to grow that email list don't cost a lot of money. Uh, while you can certainly spend that on ads to grow the list, uh, we've all seen, you know, we've all seen the, the uh, offers for things, hey, give us your email and we'll give you X. Maybe it's mm -hmm. a free download, uh, a free, you know, uh, a, a, you know, your name is entered into a drawing, or whatever sure. the case may be. Things like that and, and expanding your reach through partnerships. Maybe, maybe there's somebody else in your space that you can talk to that has a much larger audience that you than you do, and and may be willing to partner um, and and mm -hmm. share their audience and, and share your product with their audience. Things like that is really what I would focus on because they are more organic, and you're going to get, you know, the the things that uh, uh, come from those types of efforts uh, are more honest and genuine. Um, mm -hmm. And just, just to back up to some of the basics, you know, a couple of years ago, yes, if I had a widget that, that targeted a certain market, I could go on Facebook and advertise my widget and target that certain market and probably sell some stuff. Um, it's not that linear anymore. Right. You know, customers need to be talked to, cajoled. You have to take them on a journey, take them by the hand, tell them a story, tell them why, what's the value proposition of doing business with your company. And if you're mission driven, even better, you have a, even a bigger story to tell, um, whatever the case may be. Um, it's, a, it's a process, right? Because we, we already know that on average, only 2% of e-commerce website right. visitors close the deal. So right. the other 98%, they got to your site for some reason, somehow, some way. So now we're back to the retargeting sure. conversation, right? <laughs> right. So, so, you know, Keep talking I really to people that, that or have already come to you and expressed interest. And express um, an interest. Where I would spend my twenty-five k. I I love that. That is such a simple message to our audience. Grow an audience that you can own, right? right? That's where the dollars are. Wonderful. That's a that's fantastic advice, Phil. I really appreciate that. Okay, Thomas, I'm going to ask if we've got some questions from the audience. I'm going to open it up to see if there's some uh, chat coming through, and because um, we are. We're, we're, we call it a take 20. Usually it's a take 25, but that's okay. It's good because <laughs> we're up against it. But yeah, we have a couple here. Um, we have a couple here. So uh, first one that came through, when considering retargeting, what media mix do you think, think works best? Uh, Chris, do you want to handle that? Or you want me to answer? You know what? I think that we I think that we probably will come up with the same answer. It's a great <laughs> question. We I would we would we would recommend uh, both a digital and a physical postcard retargeting. Um, we've uh, launched the modern IO postcard retargeting to enormous success to the e-commerce industry. But it doesn't mean that you should not do the digital. Digital is critical because you follow those folks around where they are and they're on their phones, right? We know that. So Facebook retargeting has been proven to be really effective. Digital retargeting via ad roll or double click or some other 
a digital display ads, that's terrific. And, and I think to Phil's point earlier, the one thing about retargeting that's so strong is that you're already reaching someone who you know is interested. So normal display advertising click-through rates is about 0.07%, right? It's not very much, it's seven out of 10,000. Digital retargeting is about seven out of a thousand, right? So that's still pretty good. A 0.7% click-through rates, that's good. It still means though 99.3% of those folks don't actually click on the ad, uh, but you get volume, you get you get brand presence, and you really follow those folks around to keep to keep uh, top of mind with them. The postcard retargeting is just a different animal, right? It's a direct touch right to their homes. The you know the the return to site percentage on those around. 10 to 25 percent, so it's significantly higher, almost 18 to 20 X more than digital, but it's a single touch that goes to the home, right? They keep it and they engage with it. Meanwhile, you still have that digital thing that's going around and following them around. So really it's the combination of both channels uh, that we would recommend. Yeah, and if I could, if I could add just really quickly, uh, ROI. Um, right. You can measure both. Uh, right. All the tools out there today give you great analytics and can tell you which is performing the best. And um, the ROI on retargeting still is going to beat the pants off of any raw right. advertising. <laughs> That's right. That is true. That is true. You know, and I, beat, I, and, I think... and beat the pants off is a technical marketing term that they teach in the MBA <laughs> class. <laughs> <laughs> <Anyway. laughs> um, and then uh, we've got one other one here. What are the best offline marketing tools that you find to, that drive the most site traffic? Best <sighs> offline. Phil, go ahead. You know, that's a really good question. I, and I, I don't mean to be evasive, but it really depends on who you're trying to target. You know, where do your customers live? Are they newspaper readers? You know, then newspapers, you know, uh, are they billboard readers? Right. You know, do you have a, a physical presence? Um, you know, that, that could be, uh, you know, something. And then the other thing is, you know, a lot of folks um, that I've encountered over the years, um, have had a presence like at farmers markets or um, they do some physical along with it and mm -hmm. then they use those opportunities as a distribution channel whether it's for marketing materials or taste testing things like that that's um, a great idea you know, taste testing is a great idea and yeah, sampling food, e commerce and food has really has come up obviously in the last uh, year as well so that's, right. a, that's a great avenue yeah, so, and I think that I would, of course, add something like direct mail would work too. Direct mail, though, is, is different because for, uh, you've really got to target folks who you think are going to be ready for your site. If you have a more global type of business, um, uh, there's a, a service called Every Door Direct Mail. It's extremely affordable. And what you do is you take a bunch of cards and you drop ship it to a post office, and the post office just saturates a neighborhood. Very inexpensive. Um, to do that. Um, the other thing you can do as well is, you know, to, to talk about uh, getting more online presence or bringing folks back. Uh, to Phil's point about building an email list, technology exists now so you can take an email list and do what we call a reverse append and turn it into a mailing list so you can mail to those folks too. Um, I think billboards are great. Don't underestimate the billboard, especially mm -hmm. in a neighborhood, right? Especially where you had the billboard message is very clear. Come to x.com, right? I remember seeing one called Mozzie, mozzie.com, and it was very simple. It said heating, AC, solar, right? I never heard of these guys, but suddenly I did, and suddenly I'm like, hey, if I'm in the market for solar, I see them, and I'll go to their website, right? So it's a website traffic driver. Can I can I give one short story? And I, I, it's funny that this question came up because um, Chris, I mentioned at the beginning of this that I had that we had used Modern Postcard in a former life, right. uh, like 30 years ago. And what we did was we created take ones with Modern Postcards postcards, and our our business was we sold uh, sun hats via direct mail. So we took. <laughs> Those of you that are in Southern California know the wide uh, brim lifeguard hats. We imported them from Mexico. We cleaned them up, put a nice trim on them and a leather string, and sold them as a as the ultimate garden hat for 20 bucks a piece. And nice. um, we got a lot of traction with dermatology offices. So we created modern postcard postcards with an offer on them uh, that that basically was an 800 number. We didn't have a website then. We're talking 1992, and um, you know, we sent like 500 cards to, to hundreds of dermatology offices around the country. 
Brilliant. And our address was on there too. And we got anywhere from 20 to 40 checks a day in the mail and about the same number <laughs> of calls a day. So talk about all of it. Uh, that worked. I mean, it was a take one and people brought it home. They're like, yeah, I need a sun hat. My, I just got this thing frozen off my face and my dermatologist and I need to get that. Right, that's brilliant. That's, yeah. see, that's really good marketing. Good job yeah. on that's your show. That's it was great. Fun too. <laughs> well, thank you guys. I think uh, we're about to wrap up here. Uh, as yeah. you said, Chris, take 25. Um, so <laughs> Uh, great conversation, as always. Uh, really well done. Uh, Phil, thank you so much for joining us, coming off the big event last week. We look forward to yeah. seeing what the e-commerce events has in store for 2021 and continuing to work with you guys. Uh, we're really looking forward to that. Uh, for our attendees, your next opportunity to attend a live online Take 20 episode is Wednesday, October 21st, 21st when we uh, have the second of this three-part series on the e-commerce marketplace. Please visit the pdmi.com take, uh, backslash take-20 to check out the upcoming schedule and register to attend today. Again, thank you, Chris. Thank you, Phil. And thank you for checking out this episode of the PDMI's Take 20. Enjoy the rest of your day and the rest of the work week. Stay safe and stay well. Great. Take, take care. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.